2022, no sodgy vibes. No sodgy vibes. No sodgy vibes. No sodgy vibes. On the, the booches. 2022. <laughs> <laughs>
That is my wine story. <laughs> That's your wine story. So let's, this is a little bit of lighter. This is more the plasma of Christ. Yeah, the it's plasma of Christ. <laughs> He's a good donor, this boy. It smells crisp. Mm -hmm. That is a terrific rosé. That is lovely. That is a real summer drinking wine. Yeah. Something that we've always said about rosés on the show uh, is that quite often you want to drink wines with food or with specific occasions. Rosé is just for drinking in a park. Like yeah. just go somewhere with your friends, make sure it's nice and cold. And this is exactly what I get from And if that. you're in the back garden, you can also put a handful of ice in the rosé. Who's stopping as it you? it becomes too much. Spray oh. with a bit of salt and pepper calamari though. Oh, absolutely. Mm. That is a pretty good wine actually. I drink the fuck out of it. Yeah. Which, that reminds me of like a, there's a brand called X from France. Mm -hmm. That's very much along those lines. So that's a beautiful French rosé. It's a lovely starting point. It is a lovely starting point. I'm putting that at the upper end. So upper that is, end. That's, not the, that's not the bottom. That's not the $4 bottle. That definitely ain't. So it's either 40 or 125 would be the starting point. Yeah, there. so that's that's definitely not four bucks. I, as I age, Henry, and what I've done to my digestive system as mm. a result of- Being you know, devout Catholic. Devout Catholic, yes. yes. Pursuing the blood of Christ. Yes. Um, I've given myself some kind of, it's almost like a, a gut reaction, if you will, mm. to bad wine. Oh. If a bad wine goes in, it sizzles. Okay. And it's like, it's no good, my gut knows. My gut needs a smooth ride. And this is giving you a smooth ride? Mm. All right, that's a good starting point. Now, I'm assuming, do you want a spittoon or anything? You have to drink these wines. I would never spit wine out. I would have thought so. So yes, my favorite wine story uh, is one that I probably just told you. My wife always going, oh, oh Mr. Mooney, you know so much about wine. I was at the Adelaide Test one year uh, working for Triple M. Lovely. And we were invited to the... Oh, the Henschke Bar, the one in the What's Members Pavilion in the Western Grandstand. And what is their equivalent of Grange? It is... Uh, Henschke... Hill of Grace. Yeah, fix it in post. Yeah, Hill of Post. No, it's Hill of Post. Hill of Grace. Hill of Grace. There yeah. we are, Henschke. The restaurant up there invited the Triple M team, which included myself, James Brayshaw, Mick Malloy, Mark War, the head of South Australian cricket, Isha Gua, and Chewy, our stats guy, along to compare Hill of Grace to the Grange. Ooh, so they lovely. opened, so it's a table of eight of us. They opened like a 1963 Hill of Grace and then a same Grange. And we drank them both. And then they did that with a one from the 80s. And then they did it with one from the 90s. Mm. And so... Um, Sounds like an awful afternoon. It was a yeah. sensational Sitting afternoon. around with cricket six, legends. <laughs> yeah, six bottles. It was after stump, so everyone was free to, you know, drink and not have to return to the commentary position. Yeah. And so there was six bottles on the table, and I said to the sommelier who was serving us, you know, how much is here? And he said, there's about $15,000 worth of wine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, wow, I couldn't tell the difference from one to the other. <laughs> it just was all great. It's it all excellent. Great. Yeah, that's, yeah, at least it wasn't all swill. Now, are we going to go for the thick syrupy number or the more, you're going to work our way out? I've got, I'm going to work my way through the colour palette. I, I, I just have the feeling that this is going to be hell. It's going to sizzle. Thank you very much, sir. We'll give it its due, though. This might be the this See, might be the 130 bucks. To me, that's a lovely salmon colour, which is something that I don't mind in a rosé. But uh, yeah, it, look, one of these is going to be very cheap. Um, bit, it doesn't have the same aroma. It's a bit softer. This. It's not as crisp as you were saying on that first one, I don't think. No, um, I, I feel like I'm discriminating against it on colour, and that's not right anywhere. No, no, not even in wine tastings. <laughs> It's a bit flat on the palate. There's yeah. not a lot of life in that. It's it's smooth. There's my gastric reflux isn't kicking playing in. up. That's good. So I get a little bit of uh, like a really soft berry sort of thing going on with it, like a little bit of that forest fruit sort of black currant or raspberry or something. And there's a little bit of mineral in there too, which could say that you know it's not bad. It's not bad. No ominous signs. 
for the syrup looking thing. It's difficult to differentiate between these two. Yep. Again, what we were talking about, like in your backyard with a few ice cubes and some salt and pepper squid. I don't know if the, this is going to be a substantially worse time than the first. I probably prefer the first one. It's dry. It kind of like, you know, gets you high in the cheeks. Boom. Yeah. Down. Sorry, thirsty. It's, it's a hard day's work sitting around with comedians drinking wine and talking nonsense about having Henschke and Grange with Mark Warren and Ichigua. Yeah. Talk about a table I wish I was at. That's unreal. How do there I get your It was a lot job? of fun. There was a lot of banter going back and forth, a lot of shit slinging, and um, Mark War has a very, very dry sense of humour. And I didn't really know him before that experience. Yeah. Yeah. We had a bit of a simpatico because he's very wry. And he actually often just wears his baseball cap and his glasses yeah. inside, just like a poker player. Mm -hmm. And so you, all you see is this, the corner of his mouth curl up. So yeah, he would have been, you get the feeling that War Brothers would have really enjoyed their sledging. It was Mark Warren's slip and he was saying to um, an English batsman whose name escapes me, yep. he goes, you are the worst batsman in this team. Mm. And he goes, yeah, at least I'm, the best batsman in my family. Yeah, exactly. That's a great <laughs> one. Oh God, cricket sledging, how good. Yeah. Wine, yeah, sorry. That's why we're here. We're not doing a cricket podcast, are we? Flavoursome and aromatic. Yes. I'd be surprised just based on the colour of that if that was the cheap rosé, because if you're making a cheap rosé for the masses... You would think that it's going to come out quickly. It's not going to have a lot of No, colour. no. For you, sir. This. this doesn't look like right. Oh, look at that color. That's beautiful. It's a lot nicer in glass than it is in the bottle. It does not look like a rose. And there's even a little bit less viscosity to the, the pour. You know, there's some legs on it sticking to the glass a bit more. So I Usually say, higher alcohol. Is that higher alcohol? I believe so. Dad was, I was having brunch with Dad and he was saying, You're doing more of those wine tastings today. Stop being a cockhead. If there's legs on it, it's got higher alcohol. Oh, Oof. it's a lot bigger wine. It's a much bigger wine. Let's taste what we have affectionately called Syrup Boy. Syrup Boy. I am in a complete state of confusion. Oh no. That's, that's actually kind of where we wanted you to be, if I'm right. honest with you, Lawrence. <laughs> I thought as I bowled up to, you know, the first one, I thought this is going to be pretty easy. Easy. I'm, I'm going by colour. Yeah. This is unlike any rosé I've ever had in my life. Mm. Which leans... Um, me towards thinking it's more expensive because I haven't had a lot of expensive rosés in my life before. It's all, but almost got a fortified wine taste to it, like a little bit of a sherry. I can see a, that. Or a port in there. I was thinking that. The colour as well. I was it giving you the... It's burning. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> it's burning the gut. Yeah, it does have a Because I think that that's probably the most expensive. So the gut is wrong. The gut is wrong. I think, yeah, look, I think that it's probably the most expensive as well, just because look, fucking look at it. Like, you can't make that for four bucks a bottle. Do you know no. which is which? I bought them, but I've got no idea which they are. Right, okay. I, because I actively don't want to ruin the game for myself sure. because it's fun to be in the not knowing. Yeah. And it would be really pretentious of me to sit here and play fucking puppet master with people that are strangers, you know? Because, you know, I'm meant to be testing my palate now. Yes. But the thing is, Henry, I'm 56 years of age and my tongue, along with all of my other senses, are rotting inside my stupid head. You're decaying. And that's why I need to, I have Tabasco sauce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, One know, of those, yep. A lot of salt. You ever a More salt. cigarette like, smoker at any point in your life? I was um, pretty committed through the 90s. Yeah, I've heard and that then, does wonderful things for your palate as well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Where are you thinking? What's Where's your head at? Uh, once that, you know, breaks down a bit and it gets a bit more air, mm. it doesn't feel like a rosé, but it is a rosé. It is. I would probably say that that is the most expensive. I'd be inclined to agree with you, Lawrence. I... This is a fucking chook raffle. <laughs> <laughs> this is a... This is a barrel shoot. Yeah, absolutely. Throw a dart at the board. I am... I'm going to leave it as it is. Leave it as most is. middle least and do you know what if that's four bucks a bottle yep. at bws yep. that's a bloody great buy and you know what that's great consumer advice which is what we're all about here on the channel you know helping yeah. punters out well there's you know for somebody uh, 130 bucks isn't a lot yes and for somebody else four bucks is a premium is heaps yeah is heaps let's let's start the reveals off with the one that we've come to the consensus that this is the obviously most expensive one. Lucky, don't 
don't trifle with me here. What have we got in the jug? And I've got to say, I also went against my gut. My gut blew up at that. Wanted to reject it. But Wanted to reject it. I think that you're right in the sense that now that it's been in the glass for a second, it's become a lot softer and fruitier and more yeah. rosé-like to me. All right, Lockie, what have we got in this jug? Very well done. That's $125 a bottle, Lawrence. And that is Le Puy. Le Puy. So I believe that this is oh, actually... That's a... That's a proper bottle of French rosé. Like, let's yeah. see, Rosé Maria. That, I it. believe that this is from the Bordeaux region. Right, okay. So you can now say that you've had a rosé from the Bordeaux. And when I was buying this off the lovely Iris, who always helps me out at East End Cellars before these episodes, ah. so you were saying, not many people have had a Bordeaux rosé. So welcome to a very exclusive club. Rose Marie, uh, 2019 was a great year all round in Europe. Rose Marie. Vintage. Bronze Age, since 1610, the Armoire family have been pioneering biodynamic growing. So you've absolutely nailed that. That's a 400 oh, year old. No, I, that's almost a health drink. But it, it's kind of similar to kombucha in many ways, I'd say. Ah, yeah. Or as they say on Bar and Bays, the booch. The booch. Give us the booch, style. Um. <laughs> I don't mind a sweet abbreviation. My daughter is uh, 22 and she's a feminist. She's a woman working in that space with women on women's issues. Mm -hmm. And she said, um, hey dad, oh, you know, must have been dicking around about something. And she goes, hey dad, no sodgy vibes. No sodgy vibes. No time to say misogynist. No time to say misogynist. <laughs> Too We're on the clock. How much is that bottle of How wine? How much is that? Hey, you've done it! That's the middle class. You've absolutely How nailed it. <laughs> the coronation. Oh, the king of rosé tastings, and that means that this is a four-dollar bottle of rosé. Which, look, if you're thirsty and you got four bucks, you are not going to be unhappy with that. Well, that is the Chancellor and Co. Um, the light blue bottle is a bit of a giveaway, and that is a great wine. What would this be? This, this would is be Penfolds. Penfolds Max's Rosé. Which I'm very impressed by. I've never, I've drunk a few Penfolds wines before and enjoyed them immensely, but that is unlike anything I've had from Penfolds. It's... That was a good place to start. This was a bit of a red herring because it was pretty nice. It, and very aromatic. nice. And that is four bucks. Four bucks a bottle from your local BWS. And Big you shout could, out to BWS, Beer Wine and Spirits. Uh, Beer Wine and Spirits, and we love them down there at BWS. Yeah. And you've always said that. Well. I used to go to a BWS in Fortitude Valley when I was working on Triple M Brisbane, and I'd go in and the guy would reach for the bottle. It's like, ah. Already knows. All right, a bottle of Woodford Reserve. The regular. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, congratulations. But $132. $125. 125 If you wanted to convert that, that is yeah. 26 Bottles. 26 bottles of that. And 26 bottles of that for one trip down to the Bordeaux to region. The Bordeaux region. It's up to you. That did actually ring the gut bell. Yep. So these two, my gut says yes, yes, not so much. There you go. Um, do you have anything you'd like to plug? You got shows coming up in Melbourne um, or? I am doing the Melbourne International Comedy Festival. It's a return of beauty because I only got a very short run last year and uh, so it's a show that is all killer no filler and um, <laughs> also keep your eye out for moon man uncut the podcast coming to your podcasting platforms in may look forward to it mate thank you so much for being on the show today it's Lovely been an absolute treat in the street yeah that's actually we how lawrence right and out i the met front. out the front on one tuesday morning on the way in and he was looking sharp and chipper on a tuesday morning during fringe as all comedians always are and you said like some kind of uh, bloke from a speakeasy. Hey, do you want to drink free wine? It's like, yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and here he is drinking free wine. Thank you so much for watching, guys. We'll catch you next time. Comedians in bars getting blind tastings. Cheers.